Hello, this is Joe with Objectives Technology. This is a video series showing you how we put the movie together that we have on our website. Um, I'm just going to do one section of that movie. This is uh, what I call part three. It was just a third clip I shot. Um, here's the finished clip Action. with the audio in it. So you hear the dog barking and the clicks of the machine gun firing. The actual sound will be in the final clip. So. That's what the finished finished product looks like. Here's the original clip, right, which is the the clip with no effects on it. This came from the camera. So the first thing we're going to do is I have this video open. This was just shot by my my handheld camera. It's not a camcorder, it's just a regular digital camera. It has a setting that you can take down the 20 frames per second. Um, when you're putting all the effects on here, you have to draw each frame so it does become uh, a little tedious so if you can lower the frame rate it makes it a lot easier so that's what I did so let me show you that step so let me get out of here I'm gonna go in the handbrake this is available from handbrake.fr it's a free program so what do we got this is the this is the movie that came from the from directly from the video camera I want it to be MPEG-4. Um, this H.264 doesn't work sometimes, so it's, I usually just make it uh, FFmpeg, this MPEG-4. For the quality, we want that to be 100%, so it's the same as the original. And the frame rates, I'm going to take down to 12, as I said, to make it make it a little quicker to rotoscope. And let's call this part part 3. Whoops. Okay, and then let's click start and it'll go do its thing. Okay, it tells you it's finished. Alright, so that's this is the movie we just got. Uh, I should have put that on here. Let's just add it quickly, say 12 FPS. There we go. Let's open this back up into QuickTime. You see here, this one's just, uh, this one's now 12 frames per second. So that's how you would convert it with Handbrake um, to make it easier to rotoscope. You don't have to do that step, but if you do it, it'll make it uh, easier. So, so let's go into Saber Effects. When you first go into Saber Effects, you'll get this Welcome to Saber Effects window. Uh, from here, it's a shortcut. You can view the User's Guide. That is also available from the Help menu uh, here. The how-to video will take you to our website where you'll find uh, this video and some other ones we're putting together. Um, you can also get to that here, Save Effects, the website, or the how-to videos. If you don't want this window to show up, uh, just click this button, show it start up and close it, and it will not open again unless you do this. All right, so we're done with that. Next, we want to open a movie. So I'm going to go to my desktop. Here it is. Here's the one, the part three, 12 frames per second. So we're going to open that. All right. So now we have it in Saber Effects, and Saber Effects has all these buttons here, just like a regular movie player, um, and your scrub bar to move along in the movie. You can also use the two-fingered swipe on the trackpad, which I'm doing now. And if you have a scroll wheel mouse, which I'm using, it's one of my favorite ways to go, you can use that. Okay, so, there's some interesting things in this movie, because um, we have a lot of blasters and a lot of action. So I want to show you some of the things you're going to want to do. Okay, in the movie we had a purple saber. We had the Mace Windu look, so let's go to, let's go to sabers. Whenever you start saber effects, you always get two by default, a red and a green. So I can either change that or I can add another one. In this case, I'm going to add another one. So when you add it, it adds it in black. Um, so you can see this is the one you added. So I need to take this one. I'm going to move the video a little bit. All right. Now, what I wanted to get was a purple one. So red and blue makes gives us the purple. I'm going to draw one on. So when I start drawing, I always click down here by the handle click once and release and it starts drawing the saber following the mouse 
I go to the tip of the saber uh, and I click and release. Now I want to take a look at that saber. So I want to take a look at that saber and see if it's wide enough to hide the orange of the, the plastic blade. And actually that's about right, so we're going to keep that saber. So what we would do is move through our video frame by frame. And draw them on. Okay, now I can go back and you see those frames I drawn. The saber is drawn on there. All right, another step in this one is this actor here in the distance. He has a green saber. So I'm going to go to that green. And this is, you can always name these. It's easier so when you so when you see the name in the list, it's easier to identify it. Now, this one's going to have to be a lot smaller. So let me go on here. I'm going to make this window as big as I can. Zoom in here a little bit. And click, drag, release. Now, obviously, that doesn't look good because he's so far away. So what we're going to do with that is we want to take the core width, which is the white part of the saber, and take that down. And we can take our glow down a little bit. All right, so that looks better. Let me... Uh, move a couple frames, do a couple frames for you and see what we think. You actually don't have to be very precise because this one's so far away and so small. Now you also notice that since we went to 12, converted this to 12 frames a second, see how much the, there's a lot of jumping between frames. It's kind of a an, an interesting effect in its own in its own way has a neat look to it okay um, so that's two sabers Let me show another one where he's swinging it yeah when you get a, a blur a blurring or even when you don't you want to see You'll see this effect in the movie all the time, so I I want to make this so it's wider, so it looks like it's blurring. So I'm going to draw that saber on, click down here on custom size, and this allows me to do this sort of blurring effect that we see. So there's a number of controls. That one's so far away that you won't be able to really see much of a difference. It, you can change the end of the how round it is and the skew, which is far away. You, can, you don't need to change that, but sometimes it looks better when it's moving if you're showing it. It's not perfectly round, and that's what the skew will do for you.